go ahead and plug in the live USB drive with Linux Mint. For example, if you try to unmount it, it will say could not unmount DAV and no doubt because the operating system is running from this partition. If you have installed Linux Mint alongside with Windows or any other operating system and then you decided, wait, I have allocated too much for Linux or for Windows or any other operating system or maybe not enough. How can I extend it? And actually I've been getting some questions about how to resize partitions in Linux. So today I will show you how to quickly resize partitions after you have already installed Linux Mint. It will be very simple. So let's go ahead and do it. So if you already have a dual boot setup, for example, like I do have here Linux Mint alongside with Windows and I have allocated some space for Linux and some space for Windows. If you look up at the disk, as you can see, I have the 512 gigabyte disk and on this disk, I have Windows and Linux Mint installed. If you look up at the partition layout, the partition is GUID partition table. This is why it allows me to create so many partitions. If it would be an older one like MBR, I wouldn't be able to create so many partitions, but because this is a newer one, it doesn't really have a limit as to how many partitions you can create. So if we look up here, this one is NTFS and this is a Windows recovery partition. As you can see, it says Microsoft Windows recovery environment. So this is for the Windows partition. Then if I go here, it says 105 megabyte FAT. This is our EF5 system partition, which is only 100 megabyte, but it's required to boot your system. Then the third partition is only 17 megabyte, but it's also Microsoft Resort. So this means it's a Windows partition. Then we have the main partition for Windows 10, which is NTFS. I have 157 gigabyte allocated for this Windows partition. Then there is another NTFS partition, and this one is 250 gigabyte. And this is our media or data, whatever you want to call it. It's basically the partition that is shared between Windows and Linux system. So you can store files, documents, photos, everything you need. And this is the partition that we can use to add to either Windows partition or to Linux partition because we can allocate more space. We can just shrink it down and allocate more, for example, for the Linux partition. And as you can see for the Linux, we have created for the file system, this is the root partition and I have allocated 30 gigabyte for the root partition and only have 21 gigabyte left, which is still plenty. But if you're planning to install a lot of flat packs, usually they require a lot of space. So if you want to extend it, you can do it pretty easy, which we're going to do in the next step. For the file partition, it is an ext4 Linux file system. Then there is also six gigabyte of the swap partition, which is used as your virtual RAM, basically, if your RAM gets full, it can use some of the swap partition to store some of the temporary files there so that your system doesn't crash. And here is our home partition. So this is our home partition for Linux. It's also ext4 and it's mounted at home, as you can see. So if you would like to add more space to these systems, this is what we're going to do next. So let's go ahead and do that. So one of the best tools to resize partitions in Linux Mint and actually other Linux distributions is called Gparted. If it's not installed, you can easily install it through the software manager. If you go to the software manager and simply type Gparted and search for Gparted, it will find you this program GNOME Partition Editor. And as you can see, it's already installed on my computer. But if you need to install it, simply click install here and it will install it. Because it's installed, I'm just going to simply launch it. Of course, it's going to require the password because we're going to be resizing partitions and you don't want anybody else resizing them without you knowing it. Basically, this is the same setup that we've just seen over here in the disk program, but here it allows you to resize them. So here at the top right corner, you can choose disks. If you have multiple disks on your computer, for example, lots of laptops, they usually have two drives like two SSD drives or two hard drives. Here you can choose which drive you have or if you have an external hard drive, external SSD drive, this is where they all going to be listed. So make sure to choose the proper drive that you would like to resize. Since I only have one drive right now, I don't have any other selection. 
So this is the drive here that we have just looked over here, which says media. It says 250 gigabyte, but over here it's actually saying 232 gigabyte. This is not a mistake. It's actually different because of the way how the disk space gets calculated. So it's basically the same amount, but it's just calculated differently. And this is the partition that I would like to resize. If you see this key sign here, this means that the partition is mounted. I wouldn't be able to resize partitions when it's mounted, so I would have to unmount it. As you can see, against this partition, is, there is no sign that it's mounted, so I don't need to unmount it. Actually, as you can see, it's grayed out here. And also you can see that this partition has 232 gigabyte size, but it says that almost 100 gigabytes are used, and we only have 135 unused. So this is the amount that we can shrink it by. So for example, if you have a 230 gigabyte full, you wouldn't be able to shrink it. You need to have some free space. But since I have 130 gigabyte free, I can shrink it down by this amount and then I can add it to a different partition. So let's go ahead and do that. And before performing any operations with the disk or partition, such as resizing, make sure to copy all important data from your disk or partition to avoid losing it. Even though this operation is safe, if something goes wrong, you don't want to lose all your important data, so make sure to copy it to the cloud or to the external drive before proceeding. After that, we can start resizing partitions. We can just right-click on this partition, then choose Resize, and depending where you drag it from, either from this side or from this side, this will determine how you're going to allocate space, either before or after the existing partition. As you can see here, if I would like to add it to this partition, which is the Windows partition, I would need to shrink it down here. If I would like to add it to this partition, I would need to shrink it out on this side. But as you can see, I cannot shrink it down more than the free space available. So let's say you have allocated too much for the Linux partition, but not enough for your Windows partition, and you would like to extend it. Let's go ahead and do that. You can either use this slider here, or you can put the exact amount that you want to shrink it by. Let's say I want to shrink it by 35 gigabyte. This way, I'm just going to put 35,000. And this is going to shrink this partition by 35 gigabyte. And the new size will be 203 gigabyte. Then click resize and move. And it warns you that moving a partition might cause your operating system to fail to boot. That's okay, because this is not a system partition, and this is our media partition, which is not actually used to boot from. So we just press OK. But if you would be resizing partitions like, let's say, this UEFI or other partitions, then yes, you might be getting some problems with booting. Anyway, as you can see, we have some unallocated space here that we have just created and it's 34.18 gigabyte so we can now extend this windows partition by the amount of this unallocated space so what you need to do is just right click on this partition and also choose resize and move and as you can see we have got a little bit extra space here and to be certain the amount is 35,000 megabyte so we're just going to slide like this until we see the zero and just click resize. There we go. So now we see the Windows partition is 180 gigabyte. The media partition is only 198 gigabyte, but we're not done yet. Actually, everything we've done so far is basically like a scratch. We haven't applied anything yet. So basically, if I close this program without applying, nothing will be changed. As you can see, the operations are listed down here in this menu and it shows you everything that will be done. So you can do as many operations pretty much as you want, but it's better to do fewer of them at a time because if something doesn't work, then you don't have to redo all these operations again. So we're not going to extend the Linux partition yet because, for example, if something goes wrong, I don't want to be doing it again. And to apply the pending operations, you're just going to click on this check mark here. And it will warn you that are you sure you want to apply pending operations and editing partition has the potential to cause loss of data. You are advised to back up your data before proceeding. So this is one crucial step that we need to do before resizing any partitions. Make sure to have a backup copy either in the cloud or an external drive 
this way you're sure that if something just happens out of the blue you're not gonna lose that important information if you're ready just click apply and it will start the operations as you can see we can also see the details if we want to and depending how big your partitions are and how many files you have on those partitions it could be taken either from a few seconds to a few minutes or maybe even an hour depending how big your partitions are so i'm just going to fast forward it until the end and then we're going to try to do the second one where we're going to need to extend partition for linux and that will involve one other crucial step that we need to take into account all right so the operation one of two is complete now we will do the second operation and the second operation didn't take long so yeah that was pretty quick so we can go ahead and close it and as you can see we have got this new sizes partitions now let's go ahead and work with the second scenario for example you have not enough room for the linux partition and you want to extend it how would you do that let's go ahead and find out so the second scenario for example you have enough room for windows but you don't have enough room for the linux partition especially if you install in flat packs or some large programs that require a lot of space on the disk well then you need more room for the root partition and if you have allocated only let's say like 30 gigabyte that is enough for their normal use but if you install in a lot of programs that may not be enough especially if you try to install games and stuff like that so to do that is actually pretty similar with the only difference that you're going to need to unmount the partition before you can do it so let's go ahead and click on this partition with the media and let's say we want to give it another 35 gigabyte. I will just extend it by 35 gigabyte. But this time, as you can see, you need to create the free space following this partition, not the preceding, because you don't want it to be created over here, but rather over here, because you're going to add it to this partition. Then click resize and move, and just click OK. As you can see, we have an allocated space here. And now we can extend this root partition. But before we can do that, we need to unmount it. As you can see, there is a key sign here, which means this partition is mounted. If I right click on it and click resize, and as you can see, there is no room for resizing. You can't resize a mounted partition. And when you boot into Linux Mint, the root partition is mounted because that's where your system is running from. So there is no way to unmount it. For example, if you try to unmount it, it will say could not unmount DAV, NVMe, blah, blah, blah. That's your location of the partition because the target is busy. And no doubt, because the operating system is running from this partition. That's why Gparty doesn't let you resize it. It's protecting you from modifying a live file system in use. The correct way to resize the root partition in Linux Mint would be to run from a live USB drive and not from running Mint installation itself. So for that, we're gonna need the live USB drive that we have created to install Linux Mint. If you have already formatted it, just create another one, doesn't matter, because all we're gonna need is just to run Gparted on this live USB drive so that the root partition is not mounted and we can safely resize it. I have already done that and created a live USB drive so we're going to load into the live environment and then we can resize the partition. But before we proceed, since I already have one operation pending, I'm just going to complete this operation. This way I won't have to do it afterwards. And again, it's going to be taking about a few minutes because it's going to have to do the same over again. As you can see, it's going to be about seven minutes. So I'm just going to meet you after it's done. All right, so we are done. We can go ahead and close this Gported and we have allocated some space here. So let's go ahead and close Gported. Go ahead and plug in the live USB drive with Linux Mint. And as you can see, it has mounted over here. We can just close it. As you can see, the Linux Mint 22.2 Cinnamon live USB is here, plugged in. So we're gonna go and restart the computer. And when the computer starts, we need to press a dedicated key to start from the live USB drive. In my case, it will be F12. So just press it rapidly a few times to bring the boot menu. And as you can see, I have this boot menu pop up. And in my case, it will be this USB CD-ROM Wilk, USB 3.2 Gen 1. It could be called something different in your case. 
it could be called like UEFI or something like that. But once you find it, just press enter. It's going to bring you this GRUB menu. This is where we can choose to boot from this live USB drive, start Linux Mint 22.2 Cinnamon or whatever version you have got there. It could be later version, earlier version, doesn't really matter. Just press enter and it will start booting into the live USB environment. Well, here we go. We are in the live boot environment of Linux Mint. First, we need to connect to the internet because we're going to need to download the Gparted app, which is probably not installed on this live USB drive. So let's just go ahead and connect to the Wi-Fi network. Once we're connected to the Wi-Fi network, let's go to the software manager and look for Gparted. Honestly, I don't think it's installed in the live environment. Maybe they have added into this uh, Linux Mint Cinema 22.2, but we're going to see that right now. And yeah, it's actually installed. So we could just go here and then just search for Gparted and activate it. Basically, it looks the same, same layout as we had before. The only difference is over here, we're going to have two devices. As you can see, this is my USB drive and this is the internal drive where we have Windows and Linux installed on this drive. But now, as you can see, there is no key sign here. So this means that the partition isn't mounted and we can extend it if we wish. So just right click on this root partition and then click resize. And as you can see, we have extra 35 gigabyte available to add to this partition. So simply extend it like this until you see zero here, then click resize. You get in this warning here. Yes, click OK. And yeah, basically that's it. Yeah, we simply need to click apply pending operations and yeah, just press apply and it will start the process. This shouldn't take very long, maybe going to take about a few seconds. There is not much to copy. There we go. So it's all done. And as you can see, our root partition is 64 gigabyte. And we have a little bit less left here in the media. But if you have a larger drive, like one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabytes, well, you can definitely allocate like a 100, 200 gigabyte for root. And then you can install all sorts of applications and you're going to have lots of room. Unfortunately, in this computer, I only have a 512 gigabyte NVMe drive which I already used for both for Windows and Linux. So yeah, basically this is how it's done. If you go here to the disks, so that's how it looked before. And now this is how it looked after. As you can see, the Windows partitions got larger, 193 gigabyte now, and our Linux partition got larger as well, 67 gigabytes. So now we have more room. Our media partition shrank down. Well, this is how it's done. That's basically it. Now we can go ahead and shut off the computer, pull out their live USB and start like normal. Let's go ahead and try it and see if everything's working. I prefer to shut it down and not restart. This way, once it's shut down, you can pull out the USB drive. Okay, so once the computer is fully off, we can go ahead and start it. And let's see what we're going to get. We still got our GRUB boot menu, so we'll just choose Linux Mint 22.1 Cinnamon. And as you can see, everything's working. We got the login screen. Let's go ahead and log in. And welcome to Linux Mint. Everything is working. That's great. So right now, if we go back to the disks, yeah, check this out. Have extended this partition and this partition. This is it. Let me know in the comment section below how big partition do you make for Linux Mint or other operating systems. That will be interesting to know. Share your experience. Yeah, this is how it's done. I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you like it, please support with your like. And if you first time to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new upcoming Linux videos. I appreciate it very much. This will help me a lot to grow my channel and bring you more helpful, interesting Linux videos. Also, if you run into any issues or get some questions and comments, drop them down in the comment section below. I'll try to help you if I can. And if you like what I'm doing and would like to support my channel, you can always use super thanks or simply buy me a coffee. I'm going to put the link in the description. But this is it for today. I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.